Hey guys, so we'll be designing a sequence detector for three or more ones. Okay, so we start off by making the state diagram. As zero is the initial state. Okay, so we have two options. You either input zero or one. If you input zero into the first state, uh, it does not match your sequence. So you end up back at your original state. And if you do input one, you move on to the next state, S1. Now, uh, for S1, you could either input 0 or input 1. If you input 0, you end up back at your original state. And if you input 1, you move on to state 2. Now, if you input 0 into state 2, you go back to state 0. And if you input 1 into state 2, you move on to state 3. Okay, so at this point, you have no input. At this point, you have 1 at your state. At this point, you have... 1 1 and at this point you have 1 1 1 which is the minimum requirement for our circuit so the output here is 1 and the output for the rest of these states is 0 now if you input 0 into S3 you go back to your original state and if you input 1 you end up staying at your uh, final state okay uh, from this we can design our state table now we have to decide the number of flip-flops so since we have four states four states is equal to what two to the power of two so this is the number of flip-flops you end up using so let's name them a and b so this so present state of a and flip-flop b this is your input x these are your next states a plus b plus and this is your output y okay so we'll have a total of eight different combinations zero Okay, so these are our eight different combinations, two combinations for each state. So zero, zero, this is state zero. So you have input one and input zero for state zero, input zero, input one for state one. This is state two, this is state three. So you have the two different input options for each state. Now, based on the state diagram, we look at what the next state will be for each different input. Zero, zero, if you input zero, then you end up back at zero so state zero now for zero zero if you input one you end up in the next state zero one state one is zero this is zero 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 one one zero and one one as you all should know okay zero one this is your state one state one you input zero you end up back at state zero so zero zero state one you input one you end up state two state 2. Now state 2 you look at 0 input so 0 0 and if you input 1 you end up at your next state. State 3 if you input 0 you go back to 0 0 and if you input 1 you stay at state 3. Now let's look at the outputs for each of these. For state 0 the output is 0, state 1 output 0, state 2 the output 0 and for state 3 the output is 1. So set all of these states outputs equal to 0 and for the final state the output is 1 let's move on to designing the flip-flops so uh, let's design this circuit with D flip-flops because it's the easiest as you all should know the D flip-flop D A and this is the A output so whatever you let's not forget the clock whatever is input into the D input is then output using the D flip flop. So for example if you input 0 you get 0 out. If you input 1 you end up getting 1 out. So when designing the circuit you know from the next state what you want out of this uh, out of the flip flop but you don't know what is put into the flip flop. So we'll be using uh, K maps to decide what's put in and we already have the next output. So let's set up the table for the DA and DB so let's extend this table 
for flip flops. <coughs> this is D A and this is D B. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the next state the D input is decided by the next state so if you want zero the output you input zero in the input if you want zero output zero another zero and one here then another zero then one then zero one let's look at B you want a zero output here so you input zero to B if you want a one output then you input one here then zero 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 one zero one okay so, so now you know what you have to input into each flip-flop <coughs> let's uh, design a k-map to decide the final inputs for each flip-flop a b x since each flip-flop is dependent on a b and x so zero 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 one 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 zero zero one. Okay, zero 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 one zero 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 one zero one zero one. So this is D A is equal to let's pair these together. This leads to A X or B X. Okay, let's design one for D B. Okay, zero one zero 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 one zero zero and zero one zero one zero one zero one. Let's pair these together. So DB is equal to A X or B complement X. Okay. <coughs> so now so now that we have our final inputs decided let's move on to designing the circuit this is flip-flop a output a this is d input for a and this is flip-flop b db clock clock this is connected to a common clock and now that we know what is input into da ax or bx so or gate here ax input x over here a and x or b and x so b and x so this is a and x and this is b and x so you or the two of these to get ax or bx this is your d input d input for your a and as for B, this is AX or B complement X. Since we already have AX over here, you can bring it down. Let's move, make the OR gate. This is your AX and your B complement X. Forgot to make the B complement and the A complement. So you add the two of these to get B complement X or AX. This is AX, this is B complement X. Okay, so this is your final circuit. I hope this video was helpful and uh, please do subscribe.